Hello, and welcome to a special episode of the Yarns and Brews podcast. I've decided to get out all my whips, at least the ones that I could find, and share them with you, hopefully as both an accountability tool to keep me working on these and keep me motivated, um, but also just to show you kind of the progress I have on certain projects that I have casted on. First project that I'd like to share with you today is the Marin Cardigan, and this is from the Shetland Wool Week book, 2022. And it is an all over lace cardigan that is knit in this beautiful uh, Jaeger spun wool in the colorway Hickory. And this is my most recent cast on, so I'm going from most recent to the oldest um, throughout this episode. But I'm really enjoying this one. It is definitely a slow going project and a labor of love with all that lace knitting. Never thought I'd be so excited to see a pearl row, but here I am, 2023. Um, excited to put, be purling <laughs> and it's because those uh, right side rows are just a little bit they just really need your attention so um, yeah that is my first project the second project I like to share with you is the no sweatshirt and I think I cast this on around October of 2022 so not super old but definitely um, about halfway there, I would say, with the project. So I'm about halfway done with one sleeve, still need to cast on the other, still need to finish just the rest of the body, and then put on the hood. So fairly mindless knit, um, all things considered, with the projects that I have going on. And this is knit out of Noro Kakigori in, I think it's the Omitama colorway, or Na Naha, maybe. 001 is the colorway number. It's the only number colored way that I remember, but that is uh, my second whip. The next project I'd like to share with you is the Himmel Tank. And this has been a definite labor of love um, because I got almost done with it, got down to the bottom edge only to realize I had miscounted the stitches on the, one of the underarms. So it's gonna basically shift the entire pattern. And so I really, couldn't live with that. Uh, ten it was off by 10 stitches and that's kind of a lot in this pattern, you know, probably a good like inch, inch and a half. And so I ripped it all the way back, um, almost to the beginning essentially, because um, there's not a whole lot, you know, under the arm, but I recently recast it on, knit some more on it, only to realize I was on the wrong size needles. It's just been like, one of those projects, I guess, where I'm not paying enough attention. Uh, and so I've ripped all that out and now recast on. Hopefully third try is the charm on this one, but it has a beautiful like feathery pattern down both edges. And then it has a really neat pleated fold like down by the waistline before you get to like the very bottom. So I am going to continue to work on this. I'm hoping to have it done this month along with the no sweatshirt. So we'll see what kind of progress I can make on it over the next couple of weeks. And this is in Wolf Oak Straw yarn, which is a linen yarn with some wool. So it kind of has a hairier look that's more of the linen uh, material in it. And it gives her a really nice effect in terms of like, not a completely solid colored yarn. The next pattern that I have is the Rydell sweater. So I am done with the entire body. I'm just working on the sleeves at this point. I still need to steek the edge here where the sleeve is going to be inserted. You can kind of see my steek stitches here. Uh, this pattern is written and knit entirely in the round um, using that steek, uh, that steek technique on the underarms or on the armholes. So, uh, for the sleeves, I am gonna go off pattern a little bit. So I am going to knit both of them in the round together with two steak stitches along each edge. And then I'm going to cut them, sew them together, and then sew them into um, this, into the armholes here. The other thing that I did modification wise is I added this whole additional motif from the bottom. And I did that because I, it wasn't going to completely fit me. It was going to be more cropped and I don't like to wear cropped items. So I really wish that I would have kept the green up top because I think it's such a beautiful color and I would have added that green panel down here at the bottom, but 
I just didn't think of it um, with enough time. So uh, it is what it is at this point. And then the next pattern that I have is just a me made sock basically designed. It's a little bit bigger than a normal sock and I'm knitting it out of this Icelandic wool that my mom purchased from a local fiber festival to her. The yarn is Holly Berry Icelandics and it is just a mill spun yarn um, from the Midwest. So I'm knitting these bigger than her feet, foot size and then I'm going to try to felt them um, so that they can be a hard wearing sock for her to go hiking in or, or however she plans on wearing them. Mom is really hard on her socks. She wears them pretty much in every shoe that she has and she continues to wear through them very quickly because of that. So I'm trying to make her stuff that won't wear out as quickly. The next project I have is my crochet bag. So currently I am about a two thirds of the way done with the squares. I think I have like 12 left and there were um, 27 total. So just between a half and two thirds, but um, that's where I'm currently at. And I wanna take this project with me to see if I can get those other squares done. And that way I can start piecing this project together and getting it you know, completely finished. I hope to have this done in the next two months. So um, look forward to that on future episodes. I also started the Odalie sweater um, this year or in 2022. And that is another Marie Wallen design kind of rolling a lot on itself, but it is just like kind of a short sleeve cardigan, I would call it. And it's a really cute pattern that was pushed out with her British Breeds uh, gift box set. So I'm hoping to have this done before the Knitting with Cat Hair Knit Along is completed. So stay tuned for that one. I'm hoping that I can get it finished, especially since there's no sleeves or anything like that. But there are a lot of color changes. Pretty much every four to five rows there's color change. So um, a lot of paying attention on this project for sure. And this is the Eldora sweater. And this is another Marie Wallen design. Obviously a little bit of a theme. I love casting on Marie Wallen items and not finishing them. But this is Eldora and it's out of one of the Rowan magazines that's been in circulation or it was in print quite a quite a while ago I think it was like 2010s um, but this is just knit out of some local to me cotton it's Pecolet Belly Fiber Company is the name of the brand and I have it in multiple different colorways I don't remember all of the names but it'll be linked below and if you click on uh, that link it'll take you to my Ravel my Ravelry project page and it should be in there so I'm this far done with one half of the body and with the other half I've just completed the ribbing so I'm not you know very much further on this project I kind of stalled out because the edges are really messy on this I'm trying to figure out what to do with them or how to you know sew those ends in part of me is really sad that I didn't knit this project in the round because I think that could have been an easy solution to dealing with the ends and less ends at that so um, just is what it is, so I just need to buckle down and work on it and then get it done. So this is one of my first projects that's still left over from 2021. This is the Green Mist sweater pullover. And it's a recreation of the Bohus uh, stickening patterns from Bohus Sweden. And this is a kit that I purchased from Angora Garnet, who is a, um, she mills yarn for these projects. So it's a 50-50 Angora Merino blend, but she also has a large part in preserving um, the Bohus tradition and recreating a lot of the projects that she has seen um, in her local area. So this is the Green Mist and I think I kind of stalled out on this one because I am converting it to knitting in, in the round and it wasn't just as easy as I, I think Marie Wallen's patterns for me are very easy to convert into the round but this one was supposed to be knit in the round um, on the yoke and then at the after you uh, split for the armholes then you're supposed to knit 
each front and back side flat. And that for some reason has been challenging to me to convert it into knitting in the round because I feel like I've had to cast on so many underarm stitches that I'm worried that it's going to do that strange billowy effect underneath the arm. So I just need to try it on. I need to put it on some, um, you know, cables or something like that to try it on and make sure that it is what I, what I would prefer to wear. Um, and then figuring out how to deal with those stitches, those extra stitches underarm. Another 2021 pattern that I still have to finish is the Eden Wrap Cardigan. And I started this in 2021. I think the pattern came out in 2021 as well. But uh, this yarn really hurts my hands, I gotta be completely honest. It is a um, primarily cotton, I think it's 90-10, cotton and cashmere. And it's just a very stiff yarn. And then I'm knitting it all in um, this brioche stitch. So it just is taking a long time. Not to mention the fact that I've added a ton of length onto it and had to rip it back to add more length on the front pieces. So I am currently working on this every so often, hoping to have it finished within the first six months of this year. I'm giving myself some leeway because it's not my favorite to work on and I can't work on it for extended periods of time because it, it is so hard on my hands. But uh, it would be nice to be able to wear this in spring or summer. Um, since it is like a short sleeve pattern, but basically how it works is it will fit like this, it will crisscross, and then it will have, um, it'll be seamed down the side with the back portion, and then it also have a tie along the waist. So we'll see how it works out. I was really excited because I loved the pattern on other people, but I'm not sure that it's necessarily my style. So I'm willing to give it a shot though, especially blocking it out and stuff. The shape is gonna change quite a bit. So I'm going to give it a shot and see if I like it. And this is knit out of um, a Barocco yarn and it's discontinued. I don't remember the name of the yarn anymore, but it was really hard to find additional balls of this when I was looking to um, knit mine a little bit bigger. Another sweater that I cast on in 2021 was the Driata sweater. And it is, by, I think her name is Masha. I can't pronounce her last name, but this is a really beautiful pattern and I'm not far at all. So I haven't decided if I'm going to stick with it or frog it and knit with a different yarn. I'm not so convinced that I love this yarn with this pattern. This is a fiber company, Suro, and it is an alpaca uh, cotton and merino wool blend. And I think my hesitation with this is the core of this yarn is black and then the fuzz or the alpaca is more of this burnt orange color. And there's just something that, you know, those cable, the cables in this pattern are not really popping um, the way that they do in her pattern. And I believe she just uses two strands of mohair held together on her pattern. So I might frog that and switch over to the two strands of mohair. Um, if I do that, I'm probably not going to cast that on until some of these other whips are done. The next project I have, I've never shown on this podcast before, and this is a hibernation blanket, and it is completely out of a Harrisville yarns um, in one of their bulky weight, I think it's turbine, is the yarn. And I just kind of lost momentum on this because the pattern itself is a square pattern and I really wanted a more rectangular shaped blanket. So I'm having to do some modifications to make that happen. And I think for me, it's just a little bit difficult. And then I put it down and don't remember how to do those modifications anymore. And so I'm like constantly in a state of frogging for this um, and then having to re-knit stuff that I've already knit before. So. I think at some point I just need to buckle down and just stick with one pattern um, so I'm not struggling with having to relearn techniques or figuring out what I'm supposed to do. Or I could just leave myself better nose and Ravelry to help facilitate um, some of the habits that I already have. The next pattern I have to show you, you is the Damiaka Lopa cardigan. And here's where I'm currently at. So I've started both sleeves. That's all that's really left on this, plus the steeping. 
I think why I've stalled on this one is I have been very apprehensive about the depth of the yoke. It just feels very short on me and it feels like this is going to be up in my armpit. And I'm not sure if that's gonna change when this is a cardigan or not, um, but I've just really struggled with that. And so I've put it down a lot to want, like to contemplate whether or not I should frog it. It just feels like a lot of work being wasted if I frog things, even though I am saving myself on the long run because I'm wearing something that fits me. So that's kind of the state I'm at for that one. Um, but I should just finish the sleeves and uh, move on with my life, I guess. The yarn I used for this on the main color is Fiber Company Cumbria, and it's a mohair wool blend. And then for some of these colors, I just used whatever was in my stash, but a lot of them are Jameson Spindrift. Um, a few are like Knit One Pearl Two, and I think this dark one is Tuchel Wool, so just a little bit of everything in there, but I like the colors that I chose. Here's the back side if you want to see an uninterrupted look of the color work. And I have washed and blocked that before I tried it on um, just to see if I liked the fit any better. So I'm just not sure. <laughs> and then these whips go back to 2020. And this is another hibernation blanket. It was just supposed to be a little baby blanket for like a little boy or something like that. But yeah, you can kind of see this stripe. There's like one extra, I guess two extra rows here. And so that really kind of bothered me. I don't even know if you can really tell, but I think I might, well, actually I don't think you can tell because I, I, um, I had one less row in the middle. So they're about the same in some ways, but this one's just wrong in multiple spots. So I saw that and then I couldn't get past it. And so I think I might just need to rip it back to that point and re-knit it. Otherwise I think I should just continue knitting it and finish it and give it to somebody. I mean, most people won't notice that. I think I do because I pick up on mistakes a lot, but yeah, I should just continue finishing this project so that I have something in my stash in case a friend has a baby or something like that. And then I also cast on the Nira. I think it was either 2020 or 2019. It might have even, I think it was 2019 actually. But here are the sleeves that I cast on. And I love this like feathering detail. I think the struggle with this one is I've tried on the sleeves and granted I'm going to make mine completely long sleeves but they feel a little bit tight to me and so I'm wondering if I can live with that or if I should just go up a size. I think trying it on again now I might just rip it out and go up a size because it is pretty skin tight and I would like something just slightly looser. And this is knit out of um, a Woolly Mammoth Fiber Company in, I think the colorway is Peony for this one, but it's just one of her, I think it's BFL Masham blends. And I really love the colorway. This was also featured in Lina Magazine. I don't remember which one, but that's where I am knitting the pattern from. And the pattern is Nira by Fiber Tales. Another pattern I have that I've never shown on this podcast is this crazy wild sweater. So this was inspired by Rastus. I don't remember the, there's some numbers after his name, but he's a pretty popular knitter on Instagram. But I just saw his version of a Prada lookalike sweater and I fell in love with it. And so I decided to make my own. Uh, I knit on this occasionally. There's just a lot of colors. So I don't like a lot of the yarn sitting around. And I'm knitting mine out of just Rauma uh, Finnegan, I believe, or PT2. I can't remember exactly, but um, it's just like a DK weight yarn. And I have multiple different colorways that you can see, but I cast this on in 2019. I am still working through it. I have the back started and I have the arms started. So I hope I can finish this this year. It's just been kind of hard not going off of a pattern or anything like that, trying to stay motivated. 
And then another project I have from way back in the day, either 2019 or maybe even 2018, is this shawl. This is the Sly Made Still by Kathleen Dames. And I really want the finished object. I just think this is kind of a boring knit for me. Maybe I should take it. I'm going to California in a few weeks, so maybe I should take it with me there. But this is just a lace weight Madeline Tosh um, yarn. I don't even remember the colorway anymore, but this is just their prairie base. And I'm looking forward to the finished object. It's a huge shawl. It looks really great after it's washed and blocked because it just drapes so beautifully. But it is just kind of plain old knitting. One of my oldest whips that I have logged on my Ravelry is this blanket. This is a knit along by Martin Story. I didn't do the knit along itself, but I did it after the fact. Here's all the blocks and all of the colors. I just have to weave in some ends on it. And then I have to knit this border and put this on it. This is just a pretty cabled border that will hook around the edging of this blanket. And this is an old project, either like 2017, maybe even 2016 is when I cast this on. So um, I just need to sit down and like do this border. It's fairly simple. It's just a lot of cabling. So um, maybe I can get this done this year. Hopefully I can. But that's just all knit out of the Rowan wool um, worsted weight yarn that, that they have. And then a few projects that I don't have on my Ravelry. I always have these sock tubes that I do on my um, on my sock knitting machine and or circular sock machine. And I also cast on this random sweater. It's going to be an ugly Christmas sweater. I'm not even sure when I cast it on, but I should add it to my Ravelry and work on it because I always want an ugly Christmas sweater come Christmas time, but I, I haven't made one yet. And this one is epic. It is from, I think it's like a 90s pattern book, maybe even like late 90s, early 2000s, but it has everything on it. It has, you know, Santa in his sleigh, it has snowflakes, has reindeer, has, um, you know, evergreen trees, everything. So I really want to make it because I think it would be just a really funny sweater to have for the holiday season. And I am knitting it out of, I think it's just Wool of the Andes by Knit Picks. I didn't want to invest in really nice yarn for, you know, a sweater that I'm only going to wear a few times a year. But I think this is actually a pretty nice quality wool yarn. And that wraps up all my whips, I think. I'm also curious to hear how many whips you have on the needles. Um, go ahead and comment down below if you want to share that. And if you want to share whether you have any tips for getting through whips um, or projects, anything like that. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you are not subscribed to this channel and you want to see more content from me, please feel free to subscribe below. Thank you so much and good luck in your whips. Until next time, thank you and take care. Goodbye.